trying to teach my students abstract things and poetry and how to interact with people and the effect things have on it. The one thing that works, and I don't know why, but it does and I love it, is music videos. It takes the abstract concept and it puts it into something concrete. But all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, this makes sense to me. Plus, with the videos, um, with the videos, I put in a history of Jackson, the height of his career from 32 to 54, and then I move into steel seizure case for a high school, Brown versus Board of Education, both of those are linked, and then he gets into the lesson materials, and honestly, I fell into Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. And it is a brilliant lesson. There is a website where everything is fully linked so that if a teacher wanted to take this lesson and use what I told my students, we're going to do with this as an extension activity, is they're going to get a decade. And they're going to be able to research that decade. These are all linked. And I had everything open up in a separate window so you can never lose the website. Um, I also tried to include, if you see at the bottom or the top of my website, I always try to include something that has to go right back to Jackson. So that's Jackson and the Supreme Court Justices. And we actually had a good conversation of why they're lined up the way they are. It was um, step two brings us to the literature piece, okay? So this is a three-tier lesson. I talk about Jackson's tribute to Mary Willard again, and I link that there on the Jackson Center webpage. What I have done is I chose three poems. Each of those open up in the blue in a worksheet format, and then I have at the bottom all three links for the poems. The little girl at the top is the cutest thing you've ever seen. Um, and then we have Edgar Guest's and we have The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. By Edgar A. Guest. Read for LibriVox.org by Dan Brzezinski. It couldn't be done. Somebody said that it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied, that maybe he couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so to try. So he buckled right in with the trace of a grin on his face. If he were to hit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But he took off his coat, and he took off his hat, and the first thing we knew, he'd begun it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands to point out to you, one by one, the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start in to sing as you tackle the things that cannot be done, and you'll do it. So, I like these. Um, so that's easy for a teacher to use. They can just literally play it, print out the worksheet, play the video, which is what I did, and the students follow along when you talk about it. And the reason I chose these poems is, is because Jackson never took no for an answer. Jackson always moved forward. And sometimes when you get students, that are kind of like, I can't do this, I don't want to do this. I get a lot of students with, you know, learning needs that once they get to the high school level, they kind of have a defeatist attitude. We don't do defeatist attitude in my classroom. So, doing a lesson like this showed my students, and I have some quotes from them after we did this, showed them that yes, it is possible, there are people out there who will help you, and you will succeed. So then I go to step three, And in step three, we have a slideshow. Now, the slideshow I won't play. It's the slideshow that the Robert H. Jackson Center has put together. But there is a fill-in-the-blank student worksheet and a pre-filled-in student worksheet. Um, up at the top, I've linked the Jackson Center for them to visit. And this is one of my favorites. 
never deprive someone of hope that might be all that they have. So going through that PowerPoint up there, it's a PDF PowerPoint, um, the students actually fill in a worksheet, which I have examples here if you'd like to see them. It takes them through when he was born, his early years, where he went to high school, when he graduated, what his career was, uh, when he got married, what jobs he had to show the succession, and then court cases. I chose uh, West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett and the Korematsu. Um, that's on the thing. He was chief U.S. prosecutor. He has a steel seizure case in Brown versus Board of Education before his death in 1954. So then what happened is, is that after that, I did off also offer a pre-filled in student worksheet for elementary levels if it's something that the teacher doesn't feel the students could tackle or wants a quicker way, I do have a pre-filled in worksheet that they can hand them after presenting this PowerPoint. And then, step four takes them to who they are. Now, interestingly enough, um, the prompt of there's another person who's just like Robert Jackson that we need to take a look at you. The students get a worksheet that looks almost exactly the same as the sheet that they got about Jackson and his life. But in this worksheet, they're actually making choices, telling about themselves, and making choices about what they want to do in the future. An invaluable tool for any teacher and educator. Especially for me when it comes to transition planning and when it comes to looking at IEP goals, what the student wants, you have it here on paper as a hard document. And the students love it. Um, and then I have a lovely picture. This right here links to the Town of Carroll website. Um, and I state that he lived most of his young life in Fruitsburg, New York, and we talk about that. So I tried to make this as relevant to the community and what the students know as possible to give them a true look at what, sorry, who Jackson was. And then we move into the writing prompt because any good lesson down at the county court has a writing prompt. Um, this writing prompt, I start with the speech given by James and Marsh, the genial justice. Um, and it, I talk about his writing ability. And then the students are prompted with a quote <coughs> that pops out in a worksheet form. I use this quote for my students. Um, I use this quote for my students. It's also found in your packet, but there are three quotes depending on the ability levels. And I honestly said to my students at some point in the year, you will write on all three of these quotes, maybe beginning, middle, and end of the school year. So I give options. So these are handouts for the students. And then here you see I found and linked all of the comprehensive English Regents exams, the social studies exams, primary document sources, the Office of State Assessment website, Engage New York, and I have linked Common Core State Standards Initiatives and the state shifts. So I'm trying to give the teachers a one-stop place to find everything that they may need. And then for the end, step six, I close it with another video by um, Garth Brooks called The Dance, which then is also linked with the people in the dance, and I give some narrative on what Brooks says. These extension activities <coughs> are all in addition to the lesson. I have provided a Common Core document that I personally have gone through the standards and linked grades 4, 7, 9, and 10. They just, when you open that, they pop up, boom, they're there. I think they're in your packet that you will get. Um, I have linked the history of the song. I have then gone into the book that is referenced on, on my title.